Northern Illinois Camel Challenge action. Terry Pooby takes the lead from Ricky Graham, who is now challenged by Mike Hale. It has been a ferocious three-man battle up front. Chris Carr continues to work back there in fourth, and he either has not shown his stuff yet or hasn't brought his stuff for this five-lapper because it's been Hale trying to hold off the two Hondas. Do you have any sense at this moment in a race like this who has the advantage, Bill, or is it still too close to call? I think Ricky may have a slight advantage. It seems like he can make up ground whenever he wants to, although Mike Hale's putting on a surprising charge from time to time, too. I think it's going to be a dead heat. Terry Pooby has uh, won a Camel Challenge on this racetrack, if memory serves. Mike Hale won a Camel Challenge at Sacramento, and Ricky Graham's won a handful of these things in his career. Here's a move by Atherton and a bad move by Carr. Carr slipped wide. Atherton takes over fourth. White flag is out. Looks like a three-man shootout. Hale will lead it into turn one. That seems to be his strongest point on the racetrack. Here comes Graham back under Pooby, trying to put him away. He sure doesn't want to end up racing the guy behind him. He wants to be looking forward. Exactly right. Now, Hale, like you said, has a good turn one and two behind him. He struggles a little bit more in three and four. And there you see it. Ricky Graham, Pooby both stuck it underneath him. But Ricky's in the commanding position here. I think he's going to take a run for it. Coming down to the straight, Ricky's got this thing all to his own. Pooby did not get right behind him and get tucked in for the draft. And sure enough, it's Graham by a couple of bike legs over Terry Pooby. Mike Hale, a frustrated third. Added in car and buyer. Let's hear from Ricky Graham with Larry Myers. I always come across the finish line figuring somebody's drafting me. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's just the racetrack, like I said before, the challenge is changing a lot. You really have to run all over the racetrack trying to find where there's traction. And it's, uh, you know, it was, wasn't anything easy. <laughs> and what are we going to do with that $5,000? Are we going to buy some new tires for the motorhome or the rig or uh, engine parts or maybe uh, take a day or two off and go to the beach? Yeah, I need new tires. <laughs> you bet. That's the life of the privateer. There's always a place to put the money. The fans applaud for Ricky Graham and for this guy. If you look real close, that is Craig T. Nelson. That's right, coach from the TV series with the long hair and beard. He's going to play a motorcycle racer by the name of Frank Shelby in an ABC TV movie. I'm a great believer in the story, so I, I, I sure hope this thing works. Um, I've been pushing it real hard, and, and it was an underdog, just like Coach was, you know, and we went ahead after a little while, and we're, you know, in the top five, and uh, I figure, what the heck, man, uh, you know, dirt track motorcycle racing is kind of an underdog, too, but that doesn't mean that people don't love it and don't get involved in it, and uh, I'd like to see something happen with this. All right, Craig, we wish you well with the movie. Here's a bunch of people who like dirt track racing and are ready for the main event. Led from a pole by Kevin Atherton out of White Pigeon, Michigan on the Larry Pegram, Harley Davidson. Ricky Graham comes from second starting spot. Atherton had the quicker heat race. Terry Poovey, the Texas privateer veteran, will start third on his Honda alongside the national champion, Chris Carr from California, hoping to add to his point lead. Ronnie Jones sitting in fifth starting spot here and hoping to gain points to challenge for the championship. Scotty Parker, second in the rankings. In row two, the amazing youngster from Oshkosh, Brett Byer, next to the 37-year-old veteran Steve Moorhead, Sumner, Hale, Herndon, and Jones will round out row two. And the rest of the lineup, Davey Camlin, Dave Durrell, Jay Springsteen, Rodney Ferris, and Steve Beatty coming from row three. Last week, you saw the Sacramento Mile, a big controversy over the start of the race involving Ricky Graham. We're ready to go. And look here, we got it again. Guys, jump in the line. What's the story on these starts, Bill? Well, last week, the procedure was the guy who jumps first gets sent back. They've reviewed that procedure, and now everybody who jumps gets sent to the back. And the everybody in this case are Terry Pooby, Ricky Graham, and Chris Carr. Meanwhile, Billy Herndon's bike has apparently locked up on the line. We'll start without him. Only three men on the front row. Scott Parker says thank you very much and charges into turn one with a huge lead. Why? for number three and number one. There is Carr on the bottom. Ricky Graham up on the top of the racetrack. He's already passed three or four people. Who charges right into the middle of that pack and he's going to be midfield or better by the end of the first lap. Atherton 23 with a very bad head shake on that motorcycle as the field hammer through turn three and four on the first lap. You got a glimpse of Terry Pooby, number 18 all the way at the back. Man, I like that shot. Green flag. Atherton is there with Jones and Ricky Graham.
him on the inside is third after starting from the penalty line. This guy goes fast at Springfield. He must have had his eyes closed that first lap. I don't know how he did that, but he certainly did it. Well, he did, and uh, Chris Carr must have had his eyes open because he followed Graham right up into contention inside the top five. It's all happening without Billy Herndon. Let's find out what happened to his bike. Billy, what happened? Well, I'm not really sure, Larry. I've uh, been feeling something in the clutch all day, a little chatter. I thought maybe it had a burnt uh, clutch plate or something. It's been working fine all day, and uh, when I took off right then, it just locked up solid. Uh, they won't release. I can't, even if I pull the clutch in, the thing won't release. It's something in the transmission. It's a huge disappointment. Yeah, it is. Uh, I was really looking forward to the day, and now I just, I don't know what it is. We'll just have to pull it apart and go from there and see what happens. Well, it is too bad, Billy. You're missing a great race. Nine, ten. 11 riders in the lead draft. Atherton leads it. We'll be back with more from Springfield right after this. That, to me, is what Springfield is all about. The shot on the front straight away. Hello, everyone. We're back. I'm Dave Despain with Bill Warner. Ricky Graham, number three, has taken the lead. 32, Mike Hale is second. Number two, Scott Parker rides third. Still a tight pack up front. Number, ooh, into the wall, brushing the wall. Number one, Chris Carr in about six position he got wide coming out of two and like Moorhead and his heat race scraped the wall Bill watch him drift out and hit that little berm that little berm is what saves him because they can skid the wheels up on that berm and do a little rim riding man I'll tell you what I don't want to do any of that kind of rim riding car survives it to hang on to six spot as Graham now starts to get away a little bit and Parker says I'll have none of that I got to get in Ricky's draft Parker has been the guy traditionally, historically, who's been able to break the draft and get away, maybe because Werner gives him all that horsepower. I don't know. <laughs> we won't get into that now. Question is whether Graham can do the same thing here. Do you think he's got the stuff to get away? I don't know right now. It's a little early to tell, but it seems like Ricky's going to be the dominant guy here today. Whenever there's a hassle up front, he's always able to squeak out front. He was a fast qualifier. He won his heat race, although it was not the fastest heat. He started from the penalty line, and he's now opened up about 10 yards over a good scrap among Scott Parker, number 92, Rodney Ferris, who has emerged in the last couple of laps, and the top three contender, Mike Hale, is fourth. I'll tell you what, Ricky looks to me like he's getting away because these guys are running three wide down the straightaway. There's the move by Carr to the inside. He wants second spot. He says, Scotty, if you're not going to catch Ricky, I better get busy and go try to do it. How much do they slow each other up when they're racing for position like that? Well, sometimes they can slow each other up, but more often than not, they can speed each other up. By, if they don't have conflicting lines, they can pull one another along from corner to corner. Ricky has nobody to draft with and yet seems to be getting away. What accounts for that? Uh, he has a combination of corner speed with straightaway speed. That's not a bad combination <laughs> to have. That pretty well covers the racetrack. That's why we hire Warner. He's the expert. All right. Graham getting away. Car Parker, the national championship challengers, are in a scrap for the second spot. They're further and further behind Ricky with every passing lap. Meanwhile, in fourth spot is Rodney Ferris, the privateer, who has rebounded from a suspension last year to become a factor in 93. He is under the Harley factory team, takes over the second spot. Good race at Springfield, but it is rapidly becoming a race for second. The wide shot shows you the interval. Mr. Springfield, they call him back when Ricky dominated this race year after year as a Honda factory team member. Those glory days are gone, but I'll tell you what, Ricky seems to be back in top form today. He's going to be tough to catch. Yeah, I don't know. Right now, I'd have to say he's clearly dominant out there. The only thing that he has to worry about is maybe blistering a tire by setting out so early. Good pace uh, early on and a good point about the tire because you can cook one here if you get too hot in the early laps, although the temperature today is cool. The track temperature is cool, and that's going to help him. And whatever Graham does, as we watch again the interval from first to second, we are assured a terrific race because this second place squabble behind Ricky is a thriller. Right now, Parker has the second spot, then Carr, then 92 Ferris, 32 Hale, his teammate, number nine, Springsteen, 42 is Moorhead, and 
23 is Atherton, whose motorcycle is shaking down every straightaway. Have you got that figured out yet? What's going on with the, th the 23 bike? Well, either they've got it set up too quick or he's got a broken suspension component. My guess is that it's a broken suspension component. When you say set up too quick, can you tell me what that means in five seconds? Rake trail, etc. Right. <laughs> I'll accept that. We'll be back with more after this timeout from Springfield, Illinois. Ricky Graham leads. Chris Carr, number one, ahead of a six-man battle for second spot. Then a little gap back to number 23, C. Lance Jones. 16, Ronnie Jones. Number 58, Durrell. 26 is Beattie. 27, Camlin. 98, Brett Byer. And rounding out the field, Jimmy Sumner. Here's the man who has dominated since coming from the penalty line. Ricky Graham in front. Another four wide for second. And Chris Carr wants that spot, but Mike Hale wants it worse. we got a couple of guys that are struggling. We mentioned Adam to Ronnie Jones is also backing up. What's going on there? Yeah, for whatever reason, he's worked his way from the lead to back to about eighth or ninth position, and, and you can't see anything specifically that he's having problems with. He's just slowing down. Meanwhile, going forward are number 92, Rodney Ferris, who had to come out of the semifinal, pass a lot of people to get into this position. So, too, number 32, Mike Hale. Recall that neither of them made a direct transfer out of the heat race, so they've had to come from the back, but nobody's come from the back more more impressively than Ricky Graham off the penalty line to take the lead in the first three laps of the race. Here is the battle for second. You see how tight it is. A good look at the 23 bike of Atherton shaking its head rather badly. It looks like this will boil down to a six pack and now Ferris is going to try to get away. That would really be impressive. That would be impressive. Rodney's riding some of the best races of his career this year and he's looking very impressive today. He and Eddie Adkins hooked up there. You see the shortcoming for it. Ferris as he was drafted going into the corner. No brakes going into the corner here. They just roll the throttle off and then get right back on it. And either Rodney rolled off early or the draft was enough to carry Hale and Carr past Rodney Ferris. And now Jay Springsteen is there to challenge as well. We talk about resurgent riders. We saw him at San Jose. We see him again here. Jay Springsteen's riding the best we've seen him in a long time. Yeah, Jay doing very, very well today, and you're right. This year has been one of his better years. He's confident in his equipment. He's riding just exceptionally. Number nine, Springsteen on the bottom. Around the top goes number two, Scotty Parker. Can he make that work? He got a terrific charge into the corner, but nah, the bottom line was a better exit line, and he ended up right back where he started, which was fifth in that pack. Moorhead has moved up and deserves a call. Boy, I'll tell you, that 23 bike scaring me. Adderton needs to park that baby. Well, I'd have parked it a long time. <laughs> Kevin's fearless, and this just reconfirms my theory about that. Yeah, I, I think we've got to conclude that there's something wrong with that bike, and about the only thing it could be is broken suspension. Look at this move by Moorhead, who tried to get his nose up in there and go from about six to second. The guy who did pick up a lot of positions in that exchange was Mike Hale. He dove to the inside. He got around the national champion, number one, Chris Carr, and also put Rodney Ferris away in the process. And now, Bill, what are we seeing? In here. We see this draft pass on each straightaway, and it looks like fun and games and great racing, but that gets pretty serious when you start to count the laps down. How does that work? As the laps evolve, everybody's taking little mental notes because they know they can't get away from one another, and that mental war is going on. Right now, this is turning into a real strategic thing for those last couple laps. Well, again, we allude to the things that appeal to us about this series. That is certainly one of them. You see big packs like this in stock car racing, but that's because in a 500-mile race, you get yellow flags to bunch everybody up. No yellow flags here. They run this tight because of the draft, and then they have to all be in the right position on the last lap for that charge down to the wire. I guess my question always is, how do they know the right position? <laughs> they don't. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, they think they do, but they don't. I mean, if you're dealing with two guys, you can set up a plan. When there's five or six like this, it's just impossible. You just don't know what the other guys are going to do, and you just got to hope for the best. Whatever plan you make, somebody else is going to try to destroy it, but the man with the plan today is number three, Ricky Graham. He's up and gone. This is your battle. It's six riders for second spot. It is particularly important to number one and number two. Chris Carr is number one. He is the national champion. Came here with a rather narrow point lead over number two, Scott Parker. The championship at the end of the year is what it's all about, and as they again go five wide into the corner, Parker 
says, I'm going to get up there and find out if I can draft Chris Carr down the front straightaway. That'll be an important piece of information at the end of the day. There goes Graham at something approaching 130 miles an hour. Here come the title contenders with Mike Hale, Rodney Ferris, Jay Springsteen, and Steve Moorhead all in tow. And the laps winding down. They are in the next to last lap as Graham extends his lead. Moorhead has been at the back of that pack all the way. Hasn't tested these guys. Do you think he's got something for them? Well, Moorhead's a crafty veteran. He won't extend himself any more than absolutely necessary. But I guarantee you on the last lap, if he has a trick in his bag, he'll pull it out. Well, it's time to pull it out because Ricky Graham takes the white flag. Here is the race for second. Into turn one for the final time. Parker takes the high line. Rodney Ferris comes up the bottom. He will grab third spot. Chris Carr slipping backwards. Mike Hale is now the fourth place man. Parker right where he thinks he needs to be. Powers down the back stretch. Leads the charge. Whoa, wait a minute. He goes wide and underneath him come Ferris and Hale. The privateers have put the factory Harleys behind them. Off turn four. They come for the final time. Ricky Graham wins his eighth Springfield. Run to the checkered flag. It's Hale over Ferris. What a finish. We'll be back to talk to the winners. Sports Illustrated gets you ready for NFL football in this exciting new video, Inside Football 90. Motor clothes, custom-designed casual apparel available exclusively at your Harley-Davidson dealer. <laughs> well, that says it all. The war hoop, the victory cry from Ricky Graham as privateer riders, independent, self-sponsored, sweep the rostrum here. Graham wins it over Hale and Ferris. Chris Carr at fourth. Scott Parker finishing fifth. In the second five, a great run by the rookie Brett Meyer to finish ninth. Atherton fought that 10th place bike all day. Here's the rest of the running order as we hear from the third place man. The uh, uh, fact that that motorcycle was in pieces, you know, when we walked back into pits, and uh, you were kind of walking around with a long face, and that says, man, we're going to have problems today. Was there doubt in your mind when you went out for that main event? Um, well, because the front end was different and we were just guessing at a lot of things but it paid off and I'm really happy and I'd like to thank everybody that helped me. Rodney Ferris equals his career best with a third place finish. Chris Carr gains a couple of points on Parker in the championship battle. Let's hear from Mike Hale. Mike, you've got to be just as happy yeah. as Rick Graham is here at, at for winning. I'm real happy to come out second place. I saw Ricky got away. I was running third or fourth and I knew it'd come down to battle for second and I planned it right, and my dad gave me a good bike to run. Uh, Bob Hale tuned to Bartell's Harley Davidson, and it ran good, and I was able to draft Rodney at the line. That is Mike Hale's best finish ever, but rider of the race has to be Ricky Graham. He dominated it. Let's hear from him. You know, Springfield's a fantastic racetrack. All the riders did a great job. You know, just the Honda was working great today. Was it your intention when you saw how well it was working to pull away that that uh, quickly? Is that what you were trying to do, or was that uh, just happening in the course of things? Well, just, you know, it's kind of cool out today, so I didn't think we'd have a tire problem. So I thought, let's just go ahead and, uh, you know, just run the thing as uh, fast as we can. Try not to burn out the tires, keep the wheels in line, and just, just go. And I, I was tempted to look back, but I didn't. And the only thing that made me happy here is to see Rodney and Mike second and third. <laughs> Well, that, of course, is because they took precious points away from Ricky's title rivals, Chris Carr and Scott Parker. Rick Graham, obviously the winner of the race and also the winner uh, in terms of the points battle here today. He made a giant leap. Uh, you and Chris uh, pretty much held your positions between the two of you, and I think you're pleased probably at that. Oh, yeah, you know, just uh, I'm, I was real skeptical coming in here, you know, with my uh, wrists and all, and uh, real satisfied with the day. Uh, I mean, the guy in sixth place wish he was in fifth place you know and uh, I'm, I'm real happy with it and uh excited about going into Parkersburg next weekend. It's a long year and far from over. No complaints. The bike ran good and the wrist is okay. That's it. Uh, hopefully should be net good for next week. Quick final thought, Bill Warner. Well, Ricky just showed everybody why he loves Springfield. He just flat ran away with it today. We congratulate the winner and remind you that next week, same time, we'll have the Parkersburg Half Mile on ESPN. I'm Dave Despain for Bill Warner and Larry Myers. Let's give the last word to Ricky Graham.